Cervical Instability Crew, I've got a very exciting video to share with you today. Here we have Chong interviewing Fabiana Silva. Now, Fabiana is the president of the Fascia Research Society, of which Chong is a member of. This full interview is on Chong's Patreon, which you can get for $7 a month. If you don't want to get that, that is absolutely fine. You can get the Fascia textbook for $100. Now, this is just a couple of clips from the interview to explain cervical instability from the Fascia perspective a bit better. I'm going to add some details and add some Fascia facts so that you can understand this. But if you want to hear Chong go through Fascia researchers in greater detail, Again, this is on Patreon. You can treat that like a library to learn more about fascia science. Let's get into the video. Uh, so I'm going to play a devil's advocate. Uh, so some strength, uh -huh. coach, strength culture will say, well, the, uh, you know, the muscle contract, the, the fascia, you know, they, they, it doesn't contract. So therefore, it's, it's the, the muscle is <laughs> more important. What, what, do you, what do you say to that? <laughs> Yeah, something that uh, uh, we learned uh, like I, since 2019. First of all, 2019. This is some very basic things that Fabiana is about to talk about to do with fascia anatomy that we only just learned about in 2019. Keeping in mind the fascia textbook, the first one was written back in 2013. So you can't expect your doctors to know about fascia because they didn't learn about it when they went through school. Again, this work is in its infancy, but there are people out there that are experts on this and that do know about this research. Is that fascia contracts... But fascia contracts uh, with a contraction more similar to autonomic nervous system. Okay, so Fabiana's just said that fascia contracts. Now, if we link this to Chong's work, Chong's work is very unique because it's centered around trying to increase the amount of myofibroblast cells in the fascia. Fibroblast cells are the normal type of fascia cell, but myofibroblast cells have a greater contractile capacity and they also heal the body meaning remodeling the fascia at twice the speed of normal fibroblast cells. This process to get these myofibroblast cells takes about 100 days of correct stimulation, which is why Chong's work and Chong's program goes for 12 weeks. It's a very specific recipe, and this is one of the reasons why Chong's work is completely different to the mainstream, because the goal is totally different, and it's using fascia's properties and behaviors to actually be able to allow this to happen. Like uh, more similar to visceral components and circulatory system so it's a contraction that holds everything together that uh, it's one part of something that we we call our postural tonus so postural tonus holds you together and creates stability so again, we're talking about tensegrity here, and this is what I talk about all the time. Fascia is not just the small casing around different body parts. It does also include ligaments and tendons because fascia interpenetrates through ligaments and tendons, which is all part of one system, which is called the tensegrity system. There's an argument that's currently ongoing that bones may also classify as fascia because fascia also interpenetrates through bone. We have to have the tensional element, which is the fascia. We have to have the structural element, which are the bones, which then allows tensegrity to work. I'll throw up a tensegrity model here so you can kind of see this and understand that if tension's holding the body together, it's one piece. If tension is lost in an area, instability is going to occur there and then the rest of the body is going to have to compensate because fascia is one piece because it's held together through tension so this is where when we talk about postural tonus if there is instability if tension's been lost in an area other areas will have to compensate to make up so for example a lot of people with cervical instability including myself have experienced the fact that they'll have chronic tightness often in their front of their neck and the traps now this can create symptoms in itself and you might think that this is a bit contradictory, like how is there tightness in instability, but the muscles over tension to try and compensate for the lack of fascial tension or AKA the lack of tensegrity. So this contraction of fascia uh, every time, every second keeps us or, or helps us to be against gravity, for example. It's like our postural tonus. And when the muscle generates inside the sarcomerus, generates the force of contraction. We know by research that a part of this energy is dissipated by fascial tissue in parallel, not just dissipated by the, the tendon 
in a longitudinal way. So it's something that uh, we already know. And so Chong went through this in great detail in a video inside the Patreon. This is a clinical study that has been done in untrained people. 30% roughly of the force goes from the muscle through the fascia to actually reach the tendon. So it's not just muscle tendon fascia separately everything has to work together this is in untrained individuals too so of course this is going to be at a higher level in trained individuals think about olympians people that have great force transmission people that run very fluidly and smoothly and i like to talk about elite athletes to people that have injuries because of course it's at the opposite end of the spectrum you have to be able to reverse engineer and see what the elite level looks like to be able to understand how to actually resolve the problems that occur and this is Chong's origin story. He reverse engineered the elite athletes to find the common denominator, understand how that works through the fascia science, and then have a protocol that actually allows you to go through that scientific process, which is a bit like a recipe, to actually get the characteristics that they have and use fascia's properties and behaviors to rehabilitate, to remodel the fascia tissue to then get these same characteristics. You can think that... If you want to, let's say, 100, that 100% 100 of the force, uh, the contraction, um, if you need that 100% goes or move forward, you will need the participation of the fascia. Otherwise, this will be not, this will not be 100%. Mm, so you, you basically have a leak of energy. Yes. Yes. Through, the, through the system. And if we're going to talk about leaks of energy, fascia has what's called piezoelectric properties. So piezoelectricity is the type of electricity that's created in fascia through mechanical tension. So fascia is made up of collagen. Collagen is made up of carbon and carbon is a crystal. So when these crystals are compressed through mechanical tension, which is created through hyperarch fascia training, you create an electric charge. And this electric charge is what helps remodel and rehabilitate this tissue. It's not just about the myofibroblast. It's not just about the mechanical tension. There are many elements that come into this to create this recipe to be able to create this healing picture. Again, things that you will have never heard of from your doctors and PTs because they don't understand the fascia perspective. So this leak in energy that's being talked about is not just to do with biomechanics. It's also to do with how your body's actually able to heal because if your fascia is broken, has a lot of disorganization, adhesions, densifications, fibrosis, how do you expect to be able to send electricity through your body to then be able to heal cells that need electricity charge to be able to heal? And fascia, with this postural tonus that uh, fascia brings to us because the autonomic nervous system innervation that fascias have, um, this put us like a ready to the action. So straight away when we start talking about the nervous system, a fascia fact that you need to know is that fascia has six to ten times more sensory receptors than muscle. And this is sensory receptors in all sorts of different ways. But the one that's probably going to be the most noticeable for people that have cervical inst instability is nociceptors. So this concept of pain and pain recognition. Now, if you have disorganized fascia, it's going to be recognizing that it's uncomfortable, there's a discomfort there, and the body doesn't like it. And that's what's going to potentially create a really high level of elevated stress. That's not a psychological stress, but it's a physiological stress. Now, this can impact all sorts of things like hormones and create all sorts of different types of symptoms. So here you can see how the different sensory symptoms can also be linked with the fascia. Because if there's damage, you could get all sorts of weird sensory issues. Now, the one that I really want to point out is I've seen a lot of people in the cervical instability groups that have had surgeries that have then said that after their surgeries, they have weird sensory symptoms in the back of their head where their plates are and where their fusion has happened. Now, this could be because there's densifications, there's adhesions, at a really deep level and the body's registering this and going, that's not right. So for people that are considering surgery, there is a risk there that you could be getting symptoms after surgery that you've never had before. That might require more surgery to fix or it might not be able to be fixed. When uh, someone have a strain in, in the muscle, belly, for example, uh, we know that just 10% of this type of injuries 
are just in the muscle fibers, just 10%. The, the rest, it will be myofascial injuries. So we need to take care of this because the treatment, the treatment is different. The muscle recovery is faster than the fascia. That's fantastic. And that just confirms the fact that CCI is a fascial injury. It's not a muscular injury. And ligaments obviously are included under this fascia subheading. So if 90% of all injuries, regardless of what they are, even if it's like a hamstring injury or a quad injury, it is on the fascia layer. It's more likely than not 90 to 10 going to be on the fascia layer and not the muscular layer. So instantly you should be thinking, okay, well, what are the properties and behaviors, the characteristics of fascia that I need to know to rehabilitate fascia instead of muscle? Because it is going to be completely different. They have different requirements and they do different things. And that's why fascia education is so important because you've got to understand what's actually going on to understand how to treat it. Now, this is what I'd pieced together before working with Chong. I was the first person with cervical instability to work with Chong. And I studied this for a long time. So I understood all the different moving parts before I actually went, ah, okay, this is going to be very useful for me. Characteristic of fascia that is from connective tissue that have a like a behavior uh, different from the muscle. And so muscle have one activity, one, um, how can I say, metabolism more fast than fascia. A metabolic uh, work of the muscle, it's more fast than fascia. So you just heard from Fabiana that fascia and muscle have completely different functions. Now, if cervical instability was just to do with muscles and muscle weakness, then it would be able to be resolved pretty easily with physical therapy or even things like PRP. So hopefully you've learned something about fascia today and understanding that your doctors haven't learned about this and that's why they're not going to be bringing this up. And you can see how the different symptoms that you're experiencing are directly attributed to fascia dysfunctions. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm happy for you to send me a message. I'll put my Instagram up on here and we can have a chat.